The show begins with 27-year-old Umi Shikamori, who works as an assistant director at a popular TV station. She's worked to the bone by her seniors, due to which she's always tired and has no personal life. At the moment, her team is promoting a large cosmetics company called Animal Beauty. While working on the live stream, Umi notices that the makeup product they're about to use has dropped and been destroyed. She immediately informs her boss about it, and he demands that she bring another one within 10 minutes. Following this, she hurries to the cosmetic store and asks the staff for the product. Moments later, a photographer named Kazao accidentally bumps into her, causing her phone to fall and break. She picks up her phone gently and discovers that it's still functional, even if the screen is broken. Kazao offers to fix it for her, but just then, the staff arrives and hands her the product. So, Umi doesn't pay him much attention and leaves. Soon, she arrives back at the set and hands over the product, after which, she finally breathes a sigh of relief. Several days later, the company gets ready to interview the CEO of Animal Beauty, Sakaki Kisuke. At a young age of 30, he's already a millionaire and running a successful company. When he arrives for the interview, he greets everyone kindly and speaks with them. Umi is immediately captivated by his good looks, and when he shakes her hand, her heart almost bursts out of her chest. After the interview, Umi is about to leave when she notices Kazao again and learns that he works for Animal Beauty. He offers her some cookies and takes the opportunity to introduce himself. After a brief conversation, he asks for her number, which surprises her. She then bursts into laughter and claims that he's too young for her, but he clarifies that he just wants to fix her broken screen, so he needs her contact information. Embarrassed, she quickly refuses his offer and leaves. A few days later, the team is preparing for another talk show, and Umi is exhausted after working tirelessly all week. However, her asshole boss doesn't give her any empathy at all. Moments later, animal beauty model Hina arrives and takes the stage for an interview. The live broadcast soon begins, and everything seems to be going smoothly. But after just a few minutes, Umi falls asleep and starts snoring, taking everyone by surprise. When the host approaches her, she apologizes in panic and claims that she hasn't slept in three days. The host tries to lighten the mood by praising her dedication, but Hina defends her, stating that it's the 21st century and she shouldn't be working like a slave. Seeing the situation escalate, her boss panics and immediately tells Umi to leave. Later in the hallway, Hina approaches Umi and sits beside her. Our heroine apologizes for disrupting her interview, but Hina reassures her that it's not a big deal. The two then chat for a while, and before leaving, they exchange their numbers. When Umi gets back to her office, her boss scolds her for embarrassing the company and threatens to report her to senior management. He tells her to take a few days off, after which he will decide what to do with her. Soon after, the video clip of the incident goes viral on the internet, and this leads to a wave of backlash and criticism against her company. That evening, an upset Umi is talking to her sister Nagi about the current situation. She fears she'll lose her job, which will leave her penniless. Just then, she gets a call from Hina, who wants to meet. Our heroine is confused by the sudden request, but she agrees to it anyway. Shortly after, Hina shows up, and the sisters are shocked to see such a big celebrity in their home. When Nagi asks what she's doing here, Hina reveals that she wants Umi to work at Animal Beauty. She's even arranged an interview for her. Hearing this, Umi is surprised, and she can't believe what she's hearing. She thanks Hina for this opportunity, and assures her that she will not let her down. On the day of the interview, she excitedly arrives at the company four hours early. She once again bumps into Kazao, who asks why she's there. When Umi tells him about the interview, he claims that based on her clothes, he doesn't think she'll get in. So, he decides to help her, and the two go shopping. After buying new clothes, he takes her for a makeover, and while she's there, he takes her phone for repairs. After her makeover, Umi looks incredible and Kazao is mesmerized by her beauty. He wishes her good luck, and she thanks him before heading inside. There, she comes across Kisuke, who remembers her from their last meeting. He addresses her by name and wishes her luck for the interview. This makes our girl smile, as she didn't expect him to know her name. Later in the interview, Umi meets the company's vice president, Satoru. She introduces herself and talks about her duties at her previous job. Satoru remarks that she seems only to know how to follow orders from superiors and lacks independent thinking. Then another interviewer notices that she uses their products for makeup and asks about its pros and cons. However, since Umi has only used it for the first time today, she finds herself at a loss for words. Returning home, she looks at herself in the mirror and breaks down into tears. She later meets Kazao and noticing her sadness, he attempts to console her. He suggests that even if she fails the interview, she can still return to her previous job. However, she asserts that she doesn't want to return to that place again. The following day, Umi dresses up nicely and goes to her work, where she submits her resignation letter. The boss tries to convince her to stay, but she recalls all the hardships she faced and admits she never liked this job. When she gets home, she tells Nagi that she can no longer afford this place and they might have to return to her hometown. Nagi doesn't mind, and she's happy that her sister finally left the toxic workplace. 
At that moment, Umi receives a call from Animal Beauty, informing her that she successfully passed the interview. Hearing the good news, the sisters excitedly hug each other. The following day, Umi arrives for her first day at work at Animal Beauty. There, she comes across Aturu again, who informs her that she's been assigned to the marketing department. He tells her that she'll have a one-month probationary period before becoming a permanent staff member. He then introduces her to her mentor, Yuka, who warmly welcomes her to the team. In the next scene, Umi attends a breakfast meeting where they eat and talk about new ideas. Moments later, Kasuki also joins, and they discuss plans for their upcoming product launch. Umi looks nervous as she's working with intelligent professionals for the first time in her life, because out comforts her, saying the work is quite easy. In the meeting, Yuka suggests that for their product launch, they should collaborate with 100 influencers for a live stream. She thinks having this many people will promote diversity and prove that their product can be tailor fit to the needs of different groups. Keisuke is impressed with the idea and gives the green light for its implementation. Later, we see Umi working late at the office to finish her tasks. As she's about to leave, she accidentally overhears a conversation between Kasuke and Satoru. The latter mentions that he has no intentions of keeping Umi as a permanent employee, and that he only hired her because of Hina's request. Hearing this, she feels really bad and immediately leaves. The next day, the team is set for the product launch, but suddenly a problem arises. It turns out that two of the influencers, Odagira and Eren, didn't receive the product because they had moved from the given address. As the live stream is about to begin, Keisuke becomes worried and announces that they'll have to continue without them. However, Umi is not willing to give up, so she grabs the products and goes to find the influencers. While on her way, she notices Odagiri's live stream in the car, where he complains about not getting the box from Animal Beauty. She recognizes the location and heads there to meet him. Meanwhile, Yuka also takes the products and hurries to Eren's house, where she's doing a live stream. Eventually, the two girls locate the influencers and manage to deliver the products on the live broadcast. This impresses all the viewers, and they praise the company's commitment. However, on the way back, Umi feels very sad as she remembers Satoru's words. Kazao calls her and invites her to the event, but she refuses and hangs up. He then rushes to find her, but Keisuke approaches her first and asks her to come. Our heroine says that her makeup is gone and that she doesn't look good, but he wipes away her tears and says that she's beautiful. Kazao notices them from afar, and he appears to be very upset. Later, Keisuke brings her to the company and announces that he's making her a permanent employee. Everyone begins cheering, including Satoru, who seems to have changed his mind after all. The following day during another meeting, Satoru mentions that Umi managed to save the day, but the comments were harsh due to her messy face. To improve their image, they decide to launch a makeup product that won't smudge, even in sweaty conditions. Hearing this, Keisuke suggests inviting people who sweat in the snow as their advertising spokespersons. Everyone immediately thinks of ski athletes, and the most popular one is a girl named Minami. However, they're worried because she isn't known for wearing much makeup or doing advertisements. Nonetheless, they decide to approach her in case she agrees. In the next scene, Minami arrives at the company and meets with Umi. She mentions that she saw Odagiri's broadcast and praises her sportsmanship. They chat for a while, and our girl hands her the Animal Beauty makeup kit. The latter is delighted by the free products, and she happily accepts them before leaving. That evening, Umi finds out that Minami declined the offer as she apparently isn't interested in doing makeup. However, our heroine doesn't believe this because Minami was genuinely happy to receive the makeup kit. She believes that something is sketchy, therefore the next day she heads to the ski resort to meet her. The two then indulge in conversation, and Minami finally admits that she lied about liking makeup. She reveals that athletes who wear makeup are seen as psychologically weak and less focused on their sport. Nevertheless, Minami decides to do their advertising, which makes our girl very happy. But there is one slight issue. She will be leaving for Canada the day after tomorrow. As they begin to panic, Keisuke suddenly shows up and says that they can do the shoot tomorrow. He immediately calls Satoru and asks him to schedule the shoot for the next day. That night, Umi and Kasuki decide to stay at a hotel nearby. Later, the two go to the pool and relax, and he thanks her for his efforts for this company. He then compliments her, saying that she might have the power to attract people. Hearing this, she gets nervous and doesn't know what to say. The next day, Umi goes to welcome Kazao and Hina, who have arrived for the shoot. They're initially happy to see her, but when they notice Kazuki behind her, their expressions suddenly change, and they become upset. After the session ends, Kazao looks at the pictures, and Umi joins him. The two then start arguing about which photo to choose. When the matter is finally settled, they then again start fighting over the last piece of dumpling. At that moment, Hina and Kisuki arrive and sit with them. Our handsome hero states that Hina wants to go skiing, so they should all go together. The group promptly agrees, and they head to the resort to have some fun. However, it turns out that Kisuki is a novice, and he ends up taking lessons with the children. Later, when Hina and Kazao are alone, she asks why he's been upset since this morning. He tries to avoid the topic, 
but she suggests there might be something between Kasuke and Umi. She also encourages them to pursue Umi before it's too late. Meanwhile, our heroine is skiing when she comes across Keisuke practicing alone. When she calls out to him, he gets nervous and upon hearing her voice, falls down. Umi tries to help him up, but she also loses her balance and both of them end up on the ground. At that moment, Kazao arrives and sees them in a compromising position. This upsets him deeply, so he storms away. Later, Kazawa is taking pictures of the scenery when Umi comes up to him and they accidentally collide. He checks to see if the camera is broken, but suddenly she gets closer and apologizes for fighting over the dumpling earlier. She asks why he's ignoring her, but he looks at her affectionately and takes a picture. Following this, he also apologizes and the two reconcile. The next day, Hina pulls out all the stops and shows up at Kasuki's office. She directly asks him if he's in love, but he gets nervous and denies it. However, she insists that she knows his feelings better than himself. Hina then unexpectedly kisses him on the cheek and admits she likes him. After a moment of silence, he apologizes and explains that he doesn't feel the same way toward her. This devastates her, but before she leaves, she advises him to be selfish. She says it's okay to think about the company and other people, but he also needs to take care of himself. Later, Umi watches Kazao pack his bags to leave for another meeting. She asks him to stay, but he claims he has to work. When he asks if she's upset, she casually replies yes and claims that she enjoys being around him. Hearing this, Kazao is surprised, but she doesn't pay much attention and goes back to work. The following day, as Kasuki is interacting with Umi, he realizes he feels happy when he's around her. So he returns to his office and finally admits to Satoru that he's in love with her. This news shocks the latter, as it's the first time the CEO has shown interest in a girl. Nonetheless, he's very happy for him and starts giving him instructions on how to be romantic. A little while later, Kazuki approaches Umi and asks if she would like to have dinner with him. This confuses her, so he lies and says he wants to conduct consumer research for a restaurant. Our innocent heroine buys it and she agrees to go along with him. Kazuke then happily sets up their date for the next week. The next evening, Umi goes to her favorite ramen shop with her sister and ends up getting too drunk. Nagi finds it difficult to handle her, so she calls Kazao for help. However, by the time he arrives, Umi has already collapsed. The three then head home, and on the way, Nagi asks about her sister's upcoming date with the CEO. This expectedly makes Kazao sad, but he doesn't say anything at the moment. Shortly after, Nagi leaves on her bicycle, leaving the two alone. Kazao then takes this opportunity to ask Umi about her date, but she's too drunk to respond. She also loses her balance and almost falls, but he manages to catch her. At this moment, our heroine feels butterflies in her stomach and comes to her senses. He then holds her hand and the two continue walking together. A few days later, it's Umi's date with Kasuki and she starts to get ready. Nagi excitedly helps her with her makeup, but she clarifies it's not a date and that she's just there for research. Meanwhile, Kasuki seeks advice from Satoru on what to do on the date. The latter suggests some cheesy phrases, which he writes down on his phone. Later, the two meet for dinner and both arrive 30 minutes early due to their nervousness. They then proceed to a fancy restaurant, but the meeting appears to be very awkward. To break the silence, Kasuki checks his phone and tries to bring up the topics Satoru had suggested. During their conversation, he admits to being single and asks about her relationship status. She reveals that she hasn't had a boyfriend since graduation because she's too busy working. He asks if things have changed since she started working for Animal Beauty, and she replies that she now feels she has time for a relationship. As they leave the restaurant, Kazuki arranges another date with her, claiming that he needs to do further research. She quickly agrees and thanks him for today. Later, when Umi arrives home, she's surprised to see Kazao there. Turns out Nagi invited him to feed him some healthy food, since he only eats ramen. After dinner, Umi and Kazao start doing the dishes, and he asks how her date was. She claims it wasn't a date, and with a sad expression on his face, he asks if anything happened between them. However, before she can respond, Nagi arrives and interrupts them. The following day at the office, Umi proposes the idea of organizing a photo exhibit for Kazao, which will increase his and the company's popularity. Her co-workers applaud her for this idea, and Kazuke also approves the proposal. That evening, she puts on the dress Kazao chose for her and meets him at the ramen shop. There, she carefully explains the exhibition project to him. However, he asks if it's possible not to include his name at the event. She doesn't understand, so he explains that he's always wanted to photograph ordinary people in landscapes instead of commercials. The only reason he's working at Animal Beauty is so that he can earn enough money to go abroad. He believes that this event will stereotype him and make him known as a commercial photographer, which he doesn't want. 
Umi argues that if he didn't like working for this company, he shouldn't have done it in the first place. He tries to explain, but she points out there are other ways to earn money as well. Kazao then looks at her sadly and says it has nothing to do with her. This leads to a heated argument, and she eventually leaves the place in tears. The following morning, Umi informs her co-workers that Kazao has rejected the proposal and that the exhibition has been cancelled. Everyone is sad to hear this, as they were really looking forward to the event. Later, Kazuki approaches her and asks her if she's free for dinner. She assumes it's another research project and agrees, but he states that he has something important to tell her. Days later, Kazao visits the ramen shop and to his surprise, Kazuki arrives and sits beside him. The two begin drinking and the CEO questions why he refused the proposal. Kazao tells him that he doesn't want to be a commercial photographer and that he's always wanted to capture ordinary people and landscapes. He admits that he's planning to go abroad once he's saved enough money. Hearing this, Kazuki surprisingly supports him and suggests he make the move sooner. He also promises to help him with anything he may need. Hearing this, Kazao feels a huge burden lifted off his shoulders. He then asks the CEO about his progress with Umi, surprising him. According to Kazao, they both like the same woman, but he's now given up on her because he'll be leaving Japan soon. He then encourages Kazuki to formally ask her out, as she only saw their last date as a work obligation. The next day at work, Kazuki informs the team that the company plans to release a new lipstick soon. He reveals that they've decided to sell new products in the overseas market, and they're planning to invite foreign influencers to collaborate. For this project, he assigns Yuka and Yumi as their good English speakers. The two ladies then get to work and eventually secure a collaboration agreement with a prominent foreign influencer. However, a few days later, Umi receives an email from the foreign influencer stating she can't work with such unprofessional people. In a state of panic, she rushes to the office and learns that Yuka has overslept and missed their important meeting. Yuka bows and apologizes for her behavior, but Yumi is furious that their hard work has gone in vain. She then breaks down into tears and proceeds to leave, but unexpectedly comes across Kazao and Kasuke. Our heroine freezes for a moment and runs away, but Kazao follows her. He assures her that they both did their best, but she pleads with him to leave her alone. At that moment, he gathers his courage and finally admits that he likes her. This leaves her shocked, and he hands her the photo he took of her in the snow. He states that he doesn't need a response because he's leaving Japan and it doesn't matter. After this, he walks away, leaving her in tears. The next morning at work, Kazuki speaks with a foreign influencer and successfully secures an agreement, which brings great relief to our heroine and others. In the evening, Umi leaves the office early and visits her regular ramen shop where she discovers Kazao eating and sits beside him. They chat for a while and he reveals that he'll be leaving for abroad the next day. He advises her not to be too hard on herself and to take care. Hearing this, her eyes well up with tears and she feels speechless. The two then go outside and say their final goodbyes to each other. The next morning, Umi wakes up to find her eyes puffy from crying all night. She puts on some makeup and leaves for the office. When she arrives, she notices that her entry card isn't working. Just then, Satoru arrives and informs her that she's worked too much this week and urges her to rest. She then asks him to let her in, but at that moment, Kisuke also arrives. He advises her not to suppress her feelings and go after the person she loves. Umi eventually decides to pursue Kisau and rushes to the airport. Upon arriving, she notices him heading towards the check counter. She quickly pulls him by the hand and abruptly kisses him. She then admits that she likes him too and hands him her photo, stating he'll need it for their long-distance relationship. As he stares at her in shock, Umi explains that she doesn't want to interfere with his dreams, but also doesn't want to give up on their love. Hearing this, Kazao remarks that girls are very troublesome and he gives her a passionate kiss. The following day, Umi returns to the company and gives a resignation letter to Kasuke. He's surprised since he doesn't usually receive such letters. Our heroine then clarifies that the company is great, but she believes she might become too comfortable here. Although the reason surprises him, he respects her decision and permits her to leave. The following day, an office farewell party is organized for Umi. Later, Hina approaches Kazuki and tells him that she will not give up on him. She informs him that she's willing to stand by his side and support him even if he doesn't reciprocate. She then proceeds to leave, but he then follows her outside and claims he wants to go home with her. After this, the two begin walking together with smiles on their faces. In the final scene, Umi is on a video call with Kazao saying she wants to show him something. She then brings out her business card and announces that she's starting her own company. 
Kazawa is excited for her new venture, and they both drink to celebrate the moment. Moments later, her phone rings, and she's informed that the deal with the investor has gone through. Seeing her smile, he holds the camera up to the screen and presses the shutter. 